Welcome back to the Thursday Night Football in America preview. The Tennessee Titans travel up north to the Pittsburgh Steelers as two and a half point dogs. Now, here's the thing. This game, this felt like a typical Thursday night. Oh my God, why am I watching this shit? Until. Unless. The man. Unless. The myth. Connor Hayward broke out. Oh yeah. Will Levis Did has made this game. Brothers? They are brothers. They're brothers. Their dad, former NFL player. Will Levis has made this game extremely interesting. All eyes are on Will tonight. I'm really excited to see what he can do in terms of a follow-up. I think it was like, um, it, it's weird because in the draft process, it felt like he was labeled as the most unlikable guy. And now because he fell so hard, it almost feels like everyone's rooting for him. You know, like I, I want him to be, I want him to be great. I want him to be good, too. It feels like his ceiling is super high because the arm talent is obviously there. He's got an absolute cannon of an arm. But um, real quickly, like, this is the game they should have sent to Germany. 100%. This is, this yeah. is 100% Send a Will German Send Will to fucking game. Germany. Yeah, as much as I want to see Will Levis, it would have been cooler if he was, like, in Lederhosen and across the fucking globe. He looks so German. He, he just, looks yeah. German. Yeah. The Steelers, there's something him and Kenny about Pickett, Yinzer, him and right? Ken, Yeah, him and Kenny Pickett would fucking down boots oh 100 percent. oh my god they know the twist of a boot they know sure. like the angle for yeah, sure exactly. so the pressure doesn't build up but you know instead the germans they don't have any football game they don't know the difference they're gonna get the best game of the year we're gonna have and a they're rabid, not gonna appreciate it we're gonna have a rabid fucking german fan base after sunday with miami oh, kc yeah. probably probably but let's focus on this game over under of 36 and a half the weather's gonna be a little bit chilly 30s 40s but ultimately clear so no weather concerns realistically uh key injuries We'll go through everything. Storyline, injuries, um, fantasy players that are relevant to the game. We'll talk about our picks, our favorite underdog squares, as we always do every single week. So make You sure already you know what it is. You know what it is. <laughs> Friedman you knows know what, what it is. <laughs> Please um, stop calling. <laughs> you know what it is. Uh, on the Tennessee side of the ball, we don't really have that many injuries. Obviously, with Tannehill out, that's why Will Lovis is in. They have a cornerback, Roger McCreary. He's whatever. He's out. But on the Pittsburgh side of things, we have... Something's kind of uh, up in the air. We got Kenny Pickett, who was banged up last week, and it kind of seemed like he was probably going to miss a little bit of time. Mitch Trubisky came in and played the second half, but then... Dude, he's a dog. Yeah, he like, kind of he kind of is. Kenny like, Pickett? He if, doesn't... Like, he goes down hard, twists his knee, holding his arm and ribs, and he still just... He plays through a lot of pain. Does yeah. that make him a dog, though? Because when I saw it, it felt like his season was over, and is that like him being a dog fighting through, or is he just like kind of being a bitch and exaggerating it? Like, is he milking an injury um, I would say right now? to be a dog, you got to be good. So, I'll give you that. That's the like, only problem here. It's like a cat. Yeah. He's not a, like, he's not a full it, dog. He, he wants it, to be a dog. Yeah. Can an injury hamper you if you were never good to begin with? Um. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> Those are two different like, things. But, like, he's an, out, he's an he outdoor cat. Is he, he's an outdoor cat. <laughs> he wants to be a dog. Naked cat so in the dumpster. Kenny Pickett, though, he's going to be playing. He, he, does, he plays through injuries a lot. The problem is he's not good at being a quarterback. So, that's kind of unfortunate. They have Minka Fitzpatrick, who's also going to be out for this game, which is a big hit. But they will likely be getting Cam Hayward back. Not Connor Hayward, Cam Hayward, who they lost very early in the season. Had to rest for like eight weeks, basically. He is the other side of that defensive line for the most part. He relieves some pressure off T.J. Watt. Not that it matters for Watt at this point. He can do whatever the fuck he wants with an offensive line. He's been practicing in full. I don't know if they've actually ruled him in for the game yet. And he'll probably play limited snaps if I had to guess, but it's a huge upgrade to the um, overall defense for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's been a tough team. Actually, I mean, like, both these teams have kind of been tough to figure out and, like, give an identity to this year. Yeah, I mean, you. I think you look at the rosters and it's very underwhelming, but then you have two head coaches that just get the best out of what they're working with. Yeah. Both Mike Vrabel and Mike Tomlin are, like, two guys you don't want to fade as dogs. And, you know, if you, if you back them as dogs... You've been making money. If you've, if you've been fading them, you know, at home with big spreads, you've been feeling in the wallet. So it's going to be interesting to see which underdog Mike comes out on top. They're both super gritty. They're, they both just want it yeah. more. None they have scrappy teams. They always yeah. they always end up fighting, you know, at eight and eight. Maybe they make a wild card and lose first round, but it doesn't matter because no one expected them to make the playoffs. Is yeah. Darnell Washington bad? Uh, I mean, he's a third round like rookie tight end. Yeah, but Pat's out. Like, I, don't know, I figured by now it'd get like a little bit of work. He's not. Dude's literally like seven foot three for nothing. Yeah, yeah I mean, definition of. Yeah, I feel like there's a chance that he just ends up being like an offensive lineman for a lot of his career. 
Yeah. You know, like actually a tackle. Benjamin, put on some weight. Yeah. I, I think he's a cool player. Maybe, I mean, hopefully he can develop into something. But I think his, like, combine really shot him up into – a, a stratosphere that he probably didn't need to be in, in yeah. the first place in our minds. Um, speaking of Tennessee, like they're a gritty team, but like Will Levis has the, I think the ability to like change how we look at this team altogether, right? Like we saw 100%. the upside of Will Levis. Tennessee has always been a ground and pound team, play good defense, hold teams to low scores, kind of like that's how we're going to win games. It'd be weird to have like mm-hmm. a, a high powered offense in Tennessee with yeah, like a quarterback sure. that could sling it. In Minnesota last week, got back to four and four and I think if Kirk didn't get hurt we'd all be like they could still like you know have a little spark if mm-hmm. Tennessee wins this game they're back to four and four and it could be the same exact thing like could they have an outside chance 100% you know what's kind of funny Marcus Mariota his first game as a Titan four touchdown passes four only cutters. rookie ever right I think not even just Tennessee I think it's really? the only rookie ever oh I didn't know that so Will Levis next Marcus Mariota mm-hmm. Who says no? <laughs> uh, so the matchup in general, like, Will Levis coming off a big game against Atlanta. Atlanta, I would argue, is a better pass defense. Uh, Pittsburgh, for the most part, struggles against the pass. That is definitely, like, their weak point on defense. They allow a lot of explosive plays. They're allowing the ninth most passing yards per game. And they're bottom 12 in terms of just overall coverage grade per PFF. But again, like, Pittsburgh's one of those teams that, because they're so well coached, they usually get better as the season progresses, right? Like a coach kind of goes in with maybe less talent and they understand how to utilize the talent more. You have a guy like Joey Porter, second half of the year as a rookie, probably going to be better than the first half of the year. Like those are the things I guess I kind of look for. So I don't know how much I want to take into account like, oh, Pittsburgh's been getting absolutely killed like through the air over the first month of the season kind of thing. So I think it's a good matchup where it's like not like overwhelming for Will Levis. Like he can definitely have it, but he'll definitely see his like fair share of um, disguises on blitzes and things like that. Yeah, I mean, Pittsburgh has extra time to get a scouting report on this kid. So they're definitely going to be more prepared for Will Levis. And it, it feels like his game is pretty much going to be super boomer bust where like on an average play, like I don't know what his EPA per average on a play is, but it will probably be like pretty good because he'll have like one play that just – absolutely buoys and like skyrockets every average Tennessee offensive play if that makes sense you know I wish we could like take what you said and all the abbreviations and put them out into words and see if it makes sense again probably not because you were like throwing average, average after EPA <laughs> and things and I sure think, yeah I think, I think uh, whatever part of that. you know what I mean though yeah. like they're they're oh offensive. no it's actually not expected points added I think so yeah, it could that could work see I know what I'm talking huge about. dub <laughs> rare Tony mental. dub expected <laughs> points average expected points, points added, added average. average yeah dub like, their, their offense was, I guess, moving last week. Yeah. If you look at it. do you think it, Atlanta's pass rush, like, that's just not even comparable to what Pittsburgh's going to have? No, our pass rush is, we're, like, fake good on defense. We have, like, good yeah. players. Like, AJ Terrell's great, and I think our passing defense is, like, relatively good. I I mean, we're we're good, but, like, we're not. No Grady Jerry. We're, we're not consistent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, like, we're done at, the, at that point. It's over. We're not consistent enough, I think, to be, like, a team that you need to super shy away from anymore on defense i think most people would label it as bad but you can call them fake good okay. if you want okay <laughs> yeah we're sugarcoat it yeah but I'll you die, were saying I'll earlier, die for my dogs like all, <laughs> i'll die for my outdoor cats <laughs> all those bad things about the pittsburgh secondary and now they don't have minka like i i, I am concerned about the passing game yeah or passing i think defense Traylon uh was on a five week injury hiatus comes back last week first game back a um, few inches away from a pretty big play. Overall, just like a dis- disappointing performance coming back. But he only played 55% of the snaps. So, you know, you got to think he continues to get more and more involved. And, like, Levis is good. Levis, D-Hop, Traylon, sneaky. Henry. It could be, like, a nice little offense they got. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just kind of excited to see if Tennessee's offense really starts to get dictated by Will Levis and if we see something exciting here in Tennessee. I still think it obviously runs through Derrick Henry and he'll get 20 carries a game going forward because that's kind of how you protect a rookie quarterback. But it's cool to see that, like, what I think they've been missing, and it kind of leads into the next point, which I was looking at because of uh, what we were talking about earlier. So last week, the Titans ran the ball 36 times, right, overall. 17% of them were designed runs for Will Levis. That number's high, and I looked at it, and I was like, okay, three of them came from Neal's. If you take that away... He still had three designed runs, which is like 8 to 9% of their overall rush attempts last week. Over the course of the year, Tannehill's had a 3% design run rate. And I think 
that's like where their offense has kind of changed a little bit over the years where Tannehill when they first got there he was like really athletic and he was an actual threat to move out of the pocket and run the ball a little bit number eight all time in quarterback rushing yards not the time or place for this right now it's but not, they haven't not had according that. to science <laughs> not according <laughs> fake good he's fake good as most right. people would put it um but Will Levis brings back that like athleticism for the quarterback position that I wonder if like Mike Vrabel has kind of shied away from because they didn't have Tannehill and now I know it's a one week sample size obviously but like I kind of actually love the over 10 and a half rushing yards now. Because I think if they run three design plays, even two design runs for a quarterback, He'll probably, get to 10. probably getting home. Did he, yeah. he didn't run the 40, did he? I, think everyone was, I feel like nobody runs the I think 40 every, anymore. I have no clue if he did. I think yeah. everyone was scared of AR. Yeah, most likely. Like he ran the most, of, most of the QBs didn't. Um, but Levis, I mean, if you just watch the tape, he's just a very tough, mobile, like big quarterback. He, he just feels like one of those dudes like, He's what Kenny Pickett wants to be. Pretty much, yeah, with a no. much stronger arm. Yeah, I don't, Will Levis I don't is that think, dog. Yeah. I don't even think Kenny Pickett's arm can compare to Will Levis. No, no. Will it's, Levis actually sne- like has one of the best arms already in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, one of his touchdowns that he threw to uh, Nick Akini Westbrook, where he's like rolling out right and somehow was able. Flip yeah. that, by the way. <laughs> Nick Westbrook, Akini. You know what I meant. And I know. It was just kind of funny Nick, how it came Nick up. Nick Akini, Westbrook, he, whatever. <laughs> Nick, he, Nick Westbrook, Akini, average. Yeah. <laughs> Nicky baby. Anyways, he was Dang. standing on the left side of the end zone, and Will Levis was able to hit him rolling to his right. So that, I thought, was one of his best throws that yeah. anybody's he, and he's always had that. History. He's always had that arm, and, like, everyone kind of dismissed him, but everyone dismissed all these big QBs with, like, high upside coming into the NFL. When you look at Josh Allen... You look at Herbert, and like everyone's like, oh, their accuracy isn't there, and then they just become the next best thing. All right, that was kind of Patrick Mahomes a little bit. Mahomes a little bit. I feel like Mahomes was like almost like an unknown-ish kind of QB. At that point, I don't think he had as much hype because there was a lot of QBs going before him already in the yeah. draft. But those two were almost like objectively hated on by like every— You're like, saying Mahomes and Levis. I was saying Herbert and oh, Herbert. Josh Allen. Oh, Herbert and Josh Allen. Herbert and Josh Allen, where I'm saying like Will Levis kind of falls into— It's a little bit different because those guys were like top 10, 11 picks, and Levis dropped to the second round, obviously, so— Feels like the NFL was way more off than. I think um, that's why I root for him so hard because, like, he was invited to the draft and didn't even get drafted. Yeah, it was sad. Like, he <laughs> went undrafted. Slipping is one thing, but being there and not even getting drafted that night—that's insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you th- you think of like those moments when quarterbacks slip, like Aaron Rodgers, Big Ben slipped a little bit, mm-hmm. kind of. Like, there's that iconic shot of them being all pissed in the yeah. waiting room or whatever, but they get drafted in the first round regardless. Like, Will yeah. Levis straight up. Was not picked. Yeah, they're ever. like, come back tomorrow if you want. <laughs> we'll buy you dinner. He even, like, made a thing about it, like, pre-draft. Like, I'm only going to go if I'm, like, feeling from the teams, like, I'm going to get drafted early. And they, I feel like they also, like, really only invite you if, if they are confident that you're getting picked in day yeah. one. I mean, it, it was still, like, a super early second round, but there's definitely a That's so different, though. Teardrop. Yeah. At that point, you're, you're day two. Yeah. You're getting picked the same day that, like, the 97th overall pick is. Here comes his Tom Brady comeback story, though. Well, QB 17. Well, you starting them this week. Let's move to our fantasy rankings. You have Will Levis at QB 17 and Pickett at QB 23. Thoughts? I don't I don't hate the start of Will Levis as a second quarterback in Superflex. I think the upside is definitely there. Mm-hmm. It's obviously very sketchy. Like it wouldn't be surprising if Will Levis is actually a pumpkin. And he scores you five fucking points because yeah. all of his deep shots don't connect and no touchdowns can, and right. two picks are coming this week. Yeah. I don't know. I it's weird. Like I, I think he's we probably think of him as like a ceiling player now because he's got such a big arm, but I almost feel like that helps his floor a lot too. Like I feel like he's gonna connect on big plays no matter what. He's just gonna take so many shots that one of them has if to. If they get into like garbage time, yeah, that's gonna be like seventy yards and a touchdown minimum. Where that's I feel like point. guys like Pickett who don't have that, if they fall behind or if they fall into like Bad game scripts, or if they have a bad game, that's when it usually equates to the fucking six or seven points. Yeah. I kind of like Levis a little bit more, though. It, Will Levis could be chilling with, like, five fantasy points through the first half, and then start start of the third, score you, like, another five just right off the rip. Right, and you can end up at, like, 15, 16 yeah. just for no fucking reason. So, yeah, I, I, I would I would, I would would totally be comfortable starting Levis in yeah. my QB2 spot. I really like him. Mm-hmm. Pickett, I'd, he's gone over 15 points, like, once this year. He doesn't yeah. have 20 points. He's Pickett's a desperate play in fantasy, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially against Tennessee in a in a low scoring game, the total's only at like thirty six. But I think Tennessee they have a good run defense. I feel like their numbers aren't an, a good representation of like the run defense because they face teams like Atlanta and Baltimore. Like Tennessee has gone through the ringer in terms yeah. of like no, they're de- they're definitely a very good run defense. You could definitely pass against them, 
Right, but I almost think that because they they're gonna like absolutely shut down Najee Harris and the lack of run game the Steelers have, like Kenny Pick is probably gonna get tested in not a good way. Yeah, no, that's fair. I, I mean, I like the receivers a lot more individually than I like Kenny Pickett. Right, running backs you got Derrick Henry back end of RB one. You think uh, Warren and Najee are worth a flex play? Ugh. Is there anything you wanted to say about Derrick? I feel like that's pretty fair. no. Honestly, I'm fine with all the running back. I don't think I would start Warren or Najee anywhere. The problem with Najee is like you, you need a touchdown so bad. You need and he, you need to not be playing Najee Harris. He, That's he, the yeah, issue. Yeah, the fact that and I don't doubt it. Like if you if I looked at running backs like thirty two to thirty seven, I would probably be like, all right, I guess Najee probably belongs there. But I like can't imagine a world where he's I, in my fucking starting line. I don't think so either. I mean, the dude was up. on pace. I feel like the dude's. I could be so wrong, but like it feels like he's always on pace to having a like back breaking dud. And then one play kind of like gets him serviceable. Yeah. But he doesn't get more than like 13, 14 rushing attempts a game. How many touchdowns he have on the year? One? Maybe. It, I feel like it might be two. It could be one. Uh, Singletary, AJ Dillon, Justice Hill. Actually, one that I have behind him, but I would consider over him is Tajay. Like, I, I feel like I could be convinced to put Spears over Najee. I like Spears. Mm, that's interesting. Oh, God. I would think they, the upside would... is there for Spears just because, at least in. The game against the Falcons, it feels like Will Levis was either throwing it 50 yards down the field to D-hop or was just dumping it off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, I like Spears, too. Um, do you like Spears more than Jalen Warren, though? Because I feel like they're kind of similar players where Warren's role feels a little bit more cemented. Yeah, no, I, that's why I got him behind him. I just think in the future, we could see it switch. Like, if they actually come up with, like, a serious receiving yeah. well, you're, you're, Yeah, you're just an unserious fantasy team at this point. Like, you're not... <laughs> if, you're, if you're, like, debating Najee as your RB2 right now, you're fucking in trouble. You're yeah. shot, probably. Wide receivers, um, these feel surprisingly low to me. You think? All of them? Yeah. I think... I'm fine with Pickens. Pickens, I even thought about putting a little bit lower. He only had, like, five targets, and he got saved by a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's scoring a lot, though. Him and P- Pickett seem to have a pretty good, like, chemistry going on. I like the matchup, too. I don't know, he had one catch, so. Yeah. It, it was a rainy game. You, you could call it what you want. But one catch, and that that's what you scored on the touchdown. You, you were close to having a zero day. Where do you have Gabe Davis? 20, above all of them. I would argue that. I'm they, high on him, though. Yeah. Like, Gabe Davis' ceiling is so high, though. It's like such I, a coin flip. Like, that's just... On preference. Like, yeah. let's, let's be real. Gabe Davis's floor is an absolute zero, but, like, I feel like Pickens' floor could also be, I'm, like, just as low as Gabe Davis. I would argue, like, all those are safer than Gabe. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think Pickens and Gabe, they, they feel like similar players where, like, Deontay and Stephon Diggs are definitely going to be just, like, target vacuums in their respective offenses. Pickens is a dude who's, like, shown that he can make huge plays after the catch. Like, Davis needs to catch a touchdown pass down the field. Which is, you know, likely to happen in Cincinnati, whatever. Yeah. But I feel like Pickens can also make things on his own. That's fair. I don't I know. Mean, he's he's going to have to, considering his quarterback's Kenny Pickett. That's fair. Um, Johnson's just getting targeted so highly. a little highly. hesitant with all the injuries Kenny's dealing with. Like, it's now the knee and the ribs. Like, will he be somewhat limited? Like, you saw he mm-hmm. missed a wide-open touchdown to Deontay. I think he's just bad. That that should probably be, the like, the fair. ultimate factor here. Even if Trubisky has to come in, though, like, is that really a downgrade? Is that not just a lateral move? It's kind of the same, and yeah, that's why fair. I feel like Deontay's going to get 10 targets like he always does. Pickens is always really close to a mo- monster play, and he's yeah. I feel like he's been making them half the games this year and then not the other half, but that's why I feel like he's kind of similar to Gabe Davis to me where it's like he's going to hit or not 50-50, and if he hits, it's going to be a big fucking day. But um, D-Hop at 25. That's low. I'm, I might just be really high on D-Hop this week. It's easy I, to be I, high on D-Hop. I but really yeah. like it, – it's almost like I'm holding back like – I think that's probably the right approach because I think it's probably easy to overreact to. I'm excited. Like, I hope he crushes this, but it's like it's one game. Mm -hmm. The rest of the season, he didn't score a touchdown before last week. Like, the thing I like the most points before last week. Yeah. The thing I I like the most about D Hop this week is like Levis made his first start last week and he went into full like D Hop's down there. I'm throwing it to him and D Hop like proved him right. So, anytime there's like a 50, just on more of like a human level now, anytime there's a 50 50, if it's third down, he's like, I need someone to make a play. He's going to D Hop. Yeah, D Hop himself was probably stoked about yeah. last week and the quarterback. D Hop still got it for sure. Mm. He was making plays out there. Dog. All right, well, let's move to our underdog slips, which will probably relay a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about already. But they do have an absolutely free square on there for you right now. Derrick Henry has just got to hit a yard, one single yard, and you catch a dub on Thursday Night Football. If you are new, 
to the Underdog Fantasy platform. It is linked down below. It'll take you right to the App Store, no matter what kind of phone you're using, whatever, underdogfantasy.com, the website. Use promo code BDGE. That will get you a 100% deposit match. So whatever you put down on the platform, they're going to double it for you, and then you can go double it again with the Derrick Henry .5 total yards line, and then you can tail some of the uh, some of the boxes that we're picking right now. My favorite is Tajay Spears, over 14 and a half receiving yards. So in my eyes, the roles here are really clear in this offense when it comes to like the running backs, and Tajay's been on the field. It's weird because... He's on the field a lot. It it has not always pushed into production. But for the most part, he is running a ton of routes. He's ran 50% or more of the offensive routes in five straight games. And prior to last week's game, he's gone over this line of 14 and a half receiving yards in three straight. And I kind of look back to last game where their drives just ended because there were long touchdown passes, Mm -hmm. right? Like if you're scoring 40, 50, 60 yard touchdown passes, it's really hard to start putting together eight play drives. And that's where you have these little dink and dunk passes that's where you have these you know eight nine 12 yard catches etc um and then i look at the pittsburgh defense which is a relatively good defense against running backs but they're allowing 9.6 yards per reception to the running back position on the year which is the third highest rate in the nfl and it's like tajay needs to catch one ball to make this play and i think um i think he's one of the best athletes on the team and i feel like will levis gives me a lot more confidence that tajay gets over this pretty easily yeah he's an explosive player and maybe just the defense trying to account for Deep bombs from Will Levis kind of lets up a little bit on the underneath stuff. Tajay Spears takes advantage of that. Yeah, like if you you have Tannehill under center, you're playing up at the line. You're not worried about him throwing over your head, and you have Derrick Henry back there. But now, you know, with Levis just seeing what he did last week, it's like you have to play. We're so excited. We're so in on Levis. I mean, Uh, I just also like that. It's ridiculous. Even though that Will Levis is like the complete opposite of Ryan Tannehill, it feels like they wasted no time just being like, this is his bread and butter. We're not going to try to like force him into the Tannehill role. That yeah. is obviously not like did just not fucking hold let him rip. Yeah, yeah. I do wonder like if if like the first two deep bombs he took were like incomplete or like intercepted, we'd be like he's trash. Yeah. Get Malik Willis. In he's here. the worst. <laughs> yeah. I think everyone was on that first D hop one. Everyone's like offensive pi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, and even that one, even though it was like fifty yards down the field, like. It was underthrown. Mm-hmm. Like D Hop had to come back for it. There was obviously oh, that God. huge PI. Yeah, but that's that's <laughs> also like how the deep ball works a lot of times yeah. in the NFL. Though it's like you got to have the arm strength to get it down there, and and you pay wide receivers a fuckload of money to make right. those plays. You know? I just mean like that was a high percentage chance of like not being complete. Sure, and yeah. it, it reminds me of like Jay Cutler back with like Alshon Jeffrey mm-hmm. or like Brandon Marshall, where it, just a fantasy gem because he was just going to launch. It doesn't fucking matter yeah <laughs> but like bad games are coming yeah yeah for, for sure. sure jay cutler might be a good comp it's a really Love fun us. first game though yeah. someone comped him to josh freeman which i thought was kind of interesting that was kind of before my time i don't really like remember i don't remember the i remember him playing but not really like his style mm, he was like with sense. uh vincent jackson yeah and stuff. he'd be like a chuck it all the way down the field and like yeah. make some shit happen you know so Jameis. Mm-hmm. yeah white Jameis. yeah Tampa bay kind of just went down the line of like we have our style of QB. We, want. <laughs> we got a type. Yeah. It's like Freeman, Jameis, Fitzpatrick. I got Derrick Henry over 71 rushing yards. I, I kind of wanted to sprinkle a little Derrick Henry touchdown. It was a spicy on it. It was boosted. I'm like 1.5 or 2.5? 2.5. But eh. st- still, I was like, uh, I'll talk about my actual square. Derrick Henry hit this two in a row. The, pit, the Steelers allowed the fourth most rushing yards per game to the running backs. And... Derrick Henry's line is at 17 and a half carries. So even if he misses, Vegas has him around here somewhere. 17, 18. If you got 17 carries, you times that by the 4.4 yards he's averaging, he equals 75 <laughs> yards in this game. That's just mathematics. Vegas, that's, that's that TikTok math right Vegas, there. <laughs> this isn't even, I'm not even crunching the number. Like I'm being conservative saying he goes under the carry mark. I like it. I like it too. That, that feels like way too low of a line for just Derrick Henry in general. Yeah, I was looking at the total yards and I'm like, this is a, not getting any receiving work. That's, yeah. He's like actually low key. More than I'd like. I was looking at the. <laughs> I was looking at because I, I was looking at Tajay Spears. It. Yeah, but like Henry's at like eighteen almost every game. Do for that receiving touchdown. So do I need that so bad. I don't even know what the rest of that slip is. It's probably terrible. I think it was. D- I think he took like Chase Claypool under like DJ money. Chark under Chase He's, Claypool's such. An I look back at all the it. slips that I made like preseason, and it's just like taking the under on so many scrubs. It was yeah. so fucking free money. <laughs> <laughs> It was all guys like no fucking shit. There is one where I was like Raheem Moster under 500 rushing yards. Oh, he crushed. Beats was, his, oh yeah, he beat Broncos that in was like week two, basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but back to the touchdown. What you were saying earlier, like they scored so quick, so fast last week. 
they gotta have something on the goal line or in the red zone. You know what I know what I see what hap- happens? Will Levis chucks it deep, defensive pass interference, put it on the one, punch it in with Henry. No. That's fucking money. No, you know what happens now with Levis under he center? Sneaks. Tush push. Pushy pushy. Damn. Yep. The will, no, I mean, you got the will Der- pill. No, that's different. You got Derrick Henry, Henry in the throws backfield. a touchdown to Will. Mm. Dude, imagine oh, both of them to who do you push? Put Derrick Henry under center and fucking yeah, push him in. Honestly, that's Damn, what that's are teams the real doing? Answer. Yeah, what the hell? Fucking Nick Sirianni's in the press conference like, if people could do it, they would do it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Derrick Henry just about to be taking snaps. Could you imagine if they did that with, like, Jordan Davis? Joe. That'd be insane. I would love to see the evolution of the tush push. Just did your you biggest see, motherfucker Did you see the, the fake team. they did the other day? Yeah, it was sick. That was great. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't save it. For, like, the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that blew we're, my mind. Weird time to break it out. Yeah. But I guess maybe they wanted to practice it once in game time. Also, you put it in the mind of of other teams that like, yo, this isn't always going to be the yeah. super push. fair. Yeah, that's so unfair. <laughs> it's so an o- unfair. it's an overpowering move for sure. Not valid. What else is an overpowering move is taking the higher of DeAndre Hopkins receiving yards. It's currently set at fifty two and a half. We already kind of touched on the Steelers defense, pass defense specifically, not being great. Minka Pitts Fitzpatrick is hurt. Uh, we just had a game where Trevor Lawrence threw for about 300 while it was pouring rain. Jimmy Garoppolo threw for like 300. It's a good matchup for D-Hop. The Steelers are letting up the sixth most yards to wide receivers. And now with Will Levis, they could be, this could be two catches. It's going to be high volatility in these deep throws, but like two catches can get him to 53 yards. He's getting a couple deep chucks for sure. 100%. My only concern, yeah, is like some bullshit PI ruins it, yeah. like ruins the stats. Definitely. But... So, uh, I like this one. It's so weird how we, like, in my mind, I see the Steelers always having, like, a solid defense, but every number we've thrown out is, like, bottom this, bottom in that. I'm telling you, they're going to get better. I, I think the narrative will change, and it could start with, like, this week. I think they'll start getting, like, much better over the next few weeks as Hayward gets back, as Porter gets, like, more time under him. I think also, though, like, Steelers' season has gone in a way where, what are they, like, four, are they 4-4? Four and four? I think they might be 4-3. Four and 4-3. and three. They, so. they have, like, a surprisingly good record, and I feel like every game they're, like, one drop pass from, like, losing or – I don't know. As you would say, they're fake good. Yeah. They're bad. They're one fake good. Say. Every team in the NFL is fake good, dude. They're <laughs> all fucking – Yeah. Chargers are so fake bad. <laughs> <laughs> they're just – they're not – they're just not good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> random, <laughs> random thought that I had. What if Bill Belichick got fired, took over the Chargers – Took over the Chargers? Dude, I had this thought in the gym. I was like, dude, this would be amazing to see. Why? I don't think they'd ever pay. They're That'd so be such no. a weird, like, mix of identity. It would, but it, it would be, I'm I don't so know. About. You're Even out though, on that? I, no, about. Oh, about. you're about it. You're about it. And, until I'm like, they need an offensive-minded head coach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd probably. find some way to make an yeah. excuse when they start 0-1 what do you, next year. What do you mean? Year? He's obviously going to bring Josh McDaniels now that he's <laughs> jobless. I love how they snuck that in overnight. <laughs> Do we have Dude, no one right? to wait? People aren't going to know. Josh, you're out. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> you up, you out. <laughs> Damn, they did Josh. Like they that. got rid of everything. They like, really just got rid Jimmy of him, G and they're like, go. Aiden O'Connell starting now. <laughs> <laughs> they really said, fuck it, bro. Like, why would you not They trade have their first. Devontae, yes. Yeah, thank okay. God they have okay. their first, dude. You see the reports like Jets are already looking at Devontae next year. I'm sure. So him and <laughs> Devontae <laughs> and Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs this year, I'm sure. Poor Devonte. He didn't sign up for any of this. Oh, that's brutal. That's the only guy I feel bad for in this situation. Yeah, it's tough with Carr. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, game predictions. Game Anybody? Predictions. I feel way more confident with Will Levis under center for fucking probably the worst reasons. But I'll, I'll take Tennessee plus two and a half. And then the over 36 and a half. That feels like um, two defenses that aren't great at stopping the pass. 36 and a half. Not much to ask for. Yeah, it's definitely fair. I um, want Tennessee. I'm just, I just like faded myself. Like I'm gonna keep my emotions in check. Like one game sample size, not enough. Mike Tomlin, don't want to underrate him. Taking the Steelers. Okay, and you're taking the over. Just too low of a total. Just too low. Yeah, that's the only logic, only math, only reasoning. That's fair. I mean, I I ended up taking the under of 36 and a half. I feel like the range of outcomes isn't in my favor because like this this total is so low that one broken play. And maybe Will Levis by himself can just get the Titans over this number. But more just, like, on the principle of, like, short week. It's a big field goal game. Yeah. Lots of field I don't know. Goals. I, just, I, don't, I don't really actually trust either offense. So I, I, was, I was thinking of the under all week, and I was like, oh, this is such an easy under. And then as, it's gone, as time's gone by, I've started to really like Will Levis where uh, fucking Titans are going to throw up 30 by themselves, damn it. But Dude, there's so – it feels like this year so many lines are so low. 
Like, have you ever seen a year where like there's so many over unders that are just like thirty six to thirty eight? Close. Yeah, no, it's yeah, not, it's it's insane. It feels like every over under, like I can't wait to smash the under. It's like thirty two. I feel like, like normal fuck? averages were like forty six points. Averages this year got to be like forty three. They're so down, and yeah. I can't really like figure out why either. It's weird because there's so many like roughing the passer penalties. Like, I think what it is is like you know how offenses kind of had like the renaissance, maybe like when the Shanahan McVay tree started like spread out, and it was like. A lot of the same thinking of offenses that was working, going mm-hmm. to new places. I think it's kind of flipped to where defenses have figured out how to kind of slow down these offenses because they're everywhere. Yeah, it's a lot of like it's a lot of like co- copy and paste on the other there's, side of the there, ball. There, there's a lot of like I actually remember now that you're talking about this. I'm, I remember hearing a lot about this in um, partly the athletic podcast, but yeah. other podcasts where like they're all playing deep cover too, so they're all like allowing offenses to rack up these. Smaller receptions, but way fewer plays downfield, mm-hmm. which obviously limits the scoring and stuff like that. It's just kind of the ebbs and flows. Like we had mm-hmm. big spike of offense. Now it's swinging the other way with defense. And yeah, you need to see a Mike McDaniel tree spread out. <laughs> Mike McDaniel, dude, Mike McDaniel's gonna have his own tree. But like you know, even even guys like Robert Sala and D'Amico Ryan's and Jim Schwartz for the Browns, like. Those guys are fucking cooking. Yeah. On the Brandon side Staley's of the ball. from the Sean McVay tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, crazy he, out there. So he'll, he'll be a dead branch very soon. <laughs> <laughs> stick season out it's here. Rotting apples are coming yeah. off of that one. But then uh, I'm also I'm also going to take the Titans to win this game. I think they just have way higher upside, and I'm I'm taking the dog in this situation. Like I said earlier in the episode, underdog Mike versus underdog Mike. You go with underdog Mike, and that's Mike Vrabel. Bang, and you go to underdog and use code BDGE. JMO, take us away. Saying Mike hit different. What? Saying Mike. Saying Mike? To the name Mike, right? Singing of our Mike. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we don't have a Mike. <laughs> just hit perfect. I was like, what are you talking about? I had no idea what he was talking saying about. Saying Mike hit different. <laughs> so sad he's gone. Mike, Mike, if, Mike, Mike if you're come watching home, us, misses you. Mike, Mike, come home, the kids miss you. <laughs> Mike, if you're watching this, that's our Thursday night preview. <laughs> give us a like, give us a sub, give us some love. Friedman's is coming soon. <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> Let me get the double cheese plug with no gluten. <laughs>